My thoughts of uh, Eastern go way back. Um, I think approximately 1974 when I was appointed to be on the governing board by County School Superintendent Dan Hinton. And uh, I've served with, uh, I think, four college presidents during that time. Uh, old Main, the Old Main uh, was uh, first place that I met for board meeting upstairs and then of course uh, it burned down and of course there's kind of a joke along with that that uh, we uh, had to set it to fire twice to get it burnt completely down so we could build a new one but uh, became apparent as a board member early on that uh, the problems we had here at Eastern was uh, financial. We were broke, we were in debt, uh, very little tax support because of the low assessed evaluation of our district and uh, so it became, it became apparent that we needed someone running the college that had business expertise. When Dean Curtis left the college, why Wayne McGrath, who was his vice president, became president for a few years and Gerald Hoops Jr. was his uh, vice president in charge of the business and uh, President Hoops came to us from Southern Pacific was their chief financial officer and very, uh, very sharp with business, uh, business expertise. And so when Wayne announced to us that he was going to leave the college to go to the uh, state, run the state community college board, why I went to bat on the board to uh, get Gerald Hoops Jr. Uh, appointed to fill his term. Uh, as president and it wasn't easy we had a split board and we had those members of the board that uh, thought we should go to a national search and uh, get the traditional PhD uh, educator to run the college and uh, so it was quite a battle on the board in fact Gerald Hoops uh, became our president with a split vote on the board but it is certainly paid off. Um, President Hoops uh, saw immediately that our special funding, which is equalization, which dates back to the late 60s, early 70s, needed to be uh, a permanent solution for the college. Uh, up until that time it wasn't. And uh, we had to go back to the legislature each year for special funding and uh, for, for the equalization. But I think it was in around 1982, 83, somewhere in there with uh, President Hoops' expertise of uh, lobbying and all, he, he got that established into permanent law. And that provided a steady cash flow stream into the college that's got us where we are today. Uh, anyone who comes onto the campus is just marvels at uh, our uh, facilities and our campus. I feel a, a part of that, a responsibility for that, by uh, not being the smartest cookie in the crowd, but being it smart enough to get the right person to run the institution. And then likewise, when President Hoops retired, why uh, I felt a need to continue that type of tradition of someone a little outside the education uh, field to be running the college and so I, I, I went to bat to uh, get President Bryce hired as our current college president and that's proven very beneficial to the college so a lot of pride a lot of uh, a lot of memories uh, a lot of stories I could reflect over the years uh, of keeping that going it's been a long good ride some 39 years and uh, a lot of memories of seeing the college grow and of course the campus flourish and the student activity and, and the student numbers and uh, dealing with the legislature. It's been, it's been uh, very uplifting, very uh, educational. Uh, I've grown tremendously by being able to associate with the uh, people here at the institution and uh, we're grateful we're able to be here and celebrate 125 years of of it being in existence and providing educational services to the citizens of uh, Graham County and the surrounding areas. I'm Rick Matthijs and I am a fighting Gila monster.